Good morning, friend. Welcome back to Acre Homestead. It is bright and early, and I've been up since 4 a.m. with the baby. But I've got a beautiful breakfast. I just microwaved up a sausage and muffin. This is one of the freezer meals we made together. I let it thaw in the refrigerator, one for me and one for Josh overnight. Popped it in the microwave for 60 seconds, and it's perfect. And I just made myself my second cup of coffee. And that is delicious. We are heading to my mom's house this morning to do a bunch of cooking. So I need to get a couple things packed up here and ready to go. The baby's hanging out with Josh today while my mom and I spend the day together. It's gonna be really fun. The first thing we're gonna do is we need to do a bunch of shopping and then we're gonna go back to my mom's house and do a bunch of prep. Now this party has changed quite a few times. The menu has changed quite a few times. And to be honest, I don't even know exactly what the menu is currently, but all I know is that I invited a bunch of people last night and which means I need to go downstairs and get a few more ingredients to bring to my mom's house to prep. So let's go downstairs and do some shopping. All right, I got the eggs and the prime rib. Now I just need to get my coffee, my breakfast, and then we can head to my mom's house. The boys are still sleeping. After my 4 a.m. wake up call, we were up for a little bit. I was able to get him back down and Josh and the baby are relaxing and they're gonna have a great day together. I'm gonna have a great day with my mom. Ready to go. I'm glad you're here with me today. We've got about a 35 minute drive to my mom's house this morning. I need to finish my coffee before I head out all the way. And the reason I'm the one that supplies the meat for a family dinner is because I am super passionate about local grass fed, pasture raised organic meat whenever possible. It's not always possible. You see my grocery hauls, I buy meat at the grocery store too but I do purchase most of my meat that Josh and I consume from local farmers. And when you do that, especially when you get half a cow, you get to decide how you want that butchered. And so I like to get the nice fancy cuts in roast so that when we have family dinner parties, I can be the one to supply that. And I always, I really enjoy that. And so that's why I am bringing the prime rib. I gave my mom a prime rib yesterday, but it was really little. And now that we have more people, we just need a bigger prime rib and prime rib leftovers makes the best quiche. So I'm honestly hoping that I get some leftovers so I can bring it home and I can make a steak and egg quiche for Josh and I for the week, for next week. I'm really, really hoping. If there's no leftovers, that's okay. But I also gave my mom a ham and that ham, she thought it out, what I thought was a ham, but she said it's more like a ham hock. I got two of those and I hadn't used any of them yet. And so I, wanted to supply it for Easter because ham is traditional for Easter. And she said that it's it doesn't have a lot of meat on it. So I think we're also going to do another protein, but I'm not exactly sure what that protein is yet. We will find out when we get to my mom's house because this, fam this dinner party has changed quite a few times. I'm actually gonna sit here. I'm gonna finish my coffee. I'm just gonna kind of relax just a few minutes before I head to my mom's house. I'm still on my driveway. My coffee is not warm anymore. <laughs> not at all, but that's okay. I prefer warm coffee, but I'll drink lukewarm coffee. Whatever it takes when your wake up was at 4 a.m. All right, we just got here and I'm excited to hang out with my mom today. Oh, hey mom. Sorry. What? I didn't uh, have the door unlocked. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I know the code. So did we come up with a final menu? Yes, we have. Um, and since we've added more guests, I think we're gonna do the lamb as well. Lamb, okay. So we have to, I told them that I wasn't sure exactly what the menu was because it's changed a few times. <laughs> and then I did bring you a, well, I brought some more eggs. Those aren't washed either, so we have to wash them. Okay. But, Which means I don't have to put them in the fridge like this minute. No, they don't need to go in the fridge. And then here is, so I don't know how we're gonna thaw this because we have a huge roast. 
So that's much bigger. That's probably three times the size. Oh, yeah, that is. That's, yeah, half again. Um, Do they, you... The others are in the refrigerator still. And that ham, I think that's a ham hock. I think you're right. Because it's all shin, uh, femur bone and the joint. It's not the hip. Okay. The muscle. <laughs> So what the buns. <laughs> should we put this in water? Do you think uh, cold water? Yeah, I think so. We'll put, just put it in the sink. We're gonna stick it in some cold water in the sink and we're gonna let this thaw the whole time we're shopping with cold water. My dad is going to be here all day. So while we're gone, we'll probably ask him to drain the water and fill it up again with cold water. This roast is so cold, it's gonna keep this water cold, but we need this roast to thaw in time to be able to cook it tomorrow. So mom, do we decide where we're going grocery shopping too? Cause I don't even know where we're going grocery shopping yet. So my mom just informed me that we're going to Costco first because we wanna get there before it gets too crazy. And we wanna check and see if they have lamb. Yeah. And if they don't, then we have to go to, I don't know what it's called, I used to be cash, cash and carry. Did it change names? Yeah, I think it changed names. Oh. Uh, the grocery store for restaurants to find lamb because I'm sure we can get lamb there. So our menu is prime rib. We have that ham, ham hock. From... I don't think we need to cook that. Okay, we won't then. Yeah. Okay, so we have prime rib and we'll do lamb. We're going to do potatoes au gratin, roasted lemon parmesan asparagus. Now, doesn't that speak spring to you? Uh, spring peas and shallots. That sounded really good. Uh, other daughter, Emily, is going to make hot cross buns. And we're going to do a berry lemon cake because uh, my daughter-in-law was She's celebrating. Coming? Yeah, they're oh, all good. coming. Celebrating oh, good. Okay. her birthday. And so that's what she picked. She picked a berry cake with cream cheese frosting. Awesome. And then we are also going to make chimichurri for the prime rib, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. Yes. So let's go to Costco. Let's go. So while we were in the car driving to Costco, we decided to make a horseradish sauce. So we're gonna see if at one of the stores we go to today, we can find fresh horseradish. If we can't, we'll just buy jars. Okay, that sounds good. We are on a mission today because we didn't get started quite as early as we were hoping to. We are gonna come back after we're done shopping and do all the prep for the party so that tomorrow when we have the party it can be a lot less stressful but of course we do get distracted and we enjoy looking at some of the fun spring things that costco has to offer and of course right now costco has a ton of beautiful flowers and I am just dreaming of all the flowers that hopefully are going to be in this year's garden and the perennials that I'm going to be able to plant over the years to create some really fun flowers that we'll be able to harvest throughout the summer in the following years. My mom was saying she wants to plant ranunculus in her backyard, but I don't know if they're perennial or not. Yeah, perennial hardiness yeah. zone from seven to 11 and we are in zone eight. So yeah, those will come back. Or the small gladiolus. Oh, that, that would be only pretty get too. About this big, or not the dinner, not the ones you have to take out yeah. every year, just the ones you plant. I'm excited to get some of these type of things in the landscaping at our house, but not, I shouldn't get anything quite yet, but it's fun to look. Oh, they have um, azaleas. Oh, those are they have some camellias. I had these at our last property and they were absolutely stunning. Those camellias get really big and they were the hedge from the road on our last homestead and they were so pretty in the spring right now. And I was talking about hardiness zone with my mom with ranunculus and I'm pretty sure it's hard to know exactly what my zone is because if you look at my city where I live, it's a zone seven, but we're much, much higher. And so I'm thinking that I'm going to treat my garden year and my planting of perennials that I'm in a zone seven A to be on the safe side. This is Liatris. I had this at my previous house too, and that would be a perennial if I was to plant that. And I, I'm having so much fun looking at all these. The, at the previous homestead, the previous owner had planted so many beautiful things and I was able to reap the rewards of all her efforts. And I'm excited to kind of be able to be the one to build out my gardens throughout the year. So this is phlox and there is perennial and annual phlox. And so I would like to plant this at some time, but I'm not getting any of this today, just having fun looking at all of it. 
All right, we are back and we are focused. We're gonna head to the produce. We don't really have that much we need to get at Costco, just some berries and I think the leg of lamb, if we can find a leg of lamb. Maybe the potatoes. Oh yeah, maybe the potatoes too. I am the youngest of four. I have two older sisters and an older brother. You've met both my sisters a few times throughout the years of me being on here, but they were off always doing things. And my mom and I growing up would be at the house by ourselves all the time. And so I would go grocery shopping with my mom. And it's one of my absolute fondest memories. We would usually go grocery shopping and then she would take me to either Taco Bell and we would get Taco Bell or we would eat at the food cart at Costco. My mom and I really both really like the Costco cheese pizza. It is so good to this day. I really like it. And we don't end up going to Costco food court today. I take her out to a nice restaurant and we're going to go there together. But it's just one of those core memories that I absolutely love. And I still love to this day going grocery shopping with my mom. So that is what we're doing today. So here are some berries. We found a recipe for a blueberry lemon cake because we are going to be celebrating my sister-in-law's birthday. And my mom always asks whose ever birthday it is, what dessert they would like. And she wanted a berry cake. And we couldn't find a recipe for a berry cake with cream cheese frosting because she wanted a berry cake with cream cheese frosting. So we found a blueberry lemon cake with cream cheese frosting. And so we were just talking about what, if we could add just more berries to the lemon cake or the lemon blueberry cake and kind of adapt the recipe. So we decided to do that. So we're going to add blackberries and raspberries to the blueberry cake. And friends, the cake turns out absolutely stunning. I cannot wait to show you. We're going to make the cake later today. So here is us talking now about asparagus. So we were trying to decide if we only needed one bag of asparagus or if we needed two bags of asparagus because we had ended up inviting a bunch more people to this party and we thought we might need some more food. So we end up going with two bags of asparagus. And I saw these really pretty carrot cakes that they had out. I think they had those out for Easter. And I just wanted to show you that because I thought they were super cute. And then here we go. They have lamb and we have never cooked lamb before um, I have, but my mom hasn't. We've never cooked it for a family event. So what we're doing is we're looking for the smallest one we can find just to make sure that, you know, we don't overcook lamb in case not everybody likes it. And it ends up being a huge hit. And so, but still that lamb roast is huge. So the my sister-in-law whose birthday it was, she was able to take all the leftovers home. We thought, you know what we should do is we should get the cheese at Costco because it's a great price and you can usually get really good quality. And because we're doing the potatoes, all of potatoes, Hot. yeah, scallop potatoes, we are going to look for the cheese here. Yes, and we're, we're going to double it, the potatoes, because we have increased the guest list and they always like to take them home. So and we'll need twice as much cheese. We decided to double the asparagus too. That's why we got two packages. All right, so cheese. Like I said, if you are into cheese, Costco is the best place I have found to get cheese at the best price. Even Winco, where we're going to go later, Winco is probably the most affordable grocery store in my area. We don't have an Aldi's here and the cheese prices are always better at Costco than they are at Winco. Here's my mom's grocery list. I can link that grocery list down below. I have made a free copy for it and it she organizes everything in order of how the grocery stores are laid out and it's super super helpful she always keeps that grocery list just hanging up when we were growing up and if we were to use the last of something she just always asked us to put on the list what we use the last of so that when we would go grocery shopping we would be able to buy it this cheese is a seattle company and it is Whoa, so good. Is it good and now they have it looks like Little sticks lunch. yeah portions really really good I've mentioned before that I was homeschooled and so we had a lot of time on our hands, my friends and I did, and my mom never really had rules when it came to the kitchen, whether we could be in there and cook and use whatever ingredients we could find. And that was something that was super cool because we were able to get into the kitchen and be super creative. Oh, I wanted to show you that my mom's Costco has eggs. My Costco, it is super hit or miss whether there are eggs and Generally, if you get there in the afternoon, there are no eggs. So I'm so grateful that my chickens are starting to lay again because 
I now have an abundance of eggs and I'm able to share them. But I think it's cool that my mom's Costco has eggs, but I guess we are there pretty early in the morning. But back to the kitchen. So I am so grateful that she did that because it made it so that I had no fear or anything when it came to trying new things because we were just able to get in there and create. And I hope to pass that on because I think that was super awesome that we were able to just have fun in the kitchen and it's not a place that's intimidating. Now these burger patties are something my mom was telling me about. They're 100% grass fed, grass finished beef. And that's super cool because that's something I am super passionate about. If you are interested in knowing the difference between grass fed and grass finished versus grass fed and grain finished, most cattle starts out on grass regardless of whatever it's finished out on before it's butchered and there's a completely different ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 when it comes to what the animal is finished on and so it's completely different quality Um, it's super fascinating and there's a book i read on this topic called pharmacology spelled with an f Okay, I think we're ready to check out now. I think we got it all from here and we don't have to go through the cash and carry because we got really good looking lamb. Yeah, and we do need to go to Winco though. So. Oh, certainly. That's the rest yeah. of the list <laughs> Winco. And I can link that book down below if you're interested. Now we're at Winco and I was looking at the flowers here and I'm just super excited about spring, if you can't tell. I don't end up buying any of these, but I just had to look. And so now we're at Winco, and we're going to get a bunch of the smaller items that we couldn't get at Costco, a bunch of herbs and things like that. But that book, Pharmacology, spelled with an F, if I can find it, like I said, I'll link it down below. It's super fascinating because it goes into super detail on the difference between grass-fed, grass-finished versus grass-fed, grain-finished. Almost all cattle starts out on grass and and there's no regulations on packaging so if you see grass-fed beef in the grocery store it's hard to know exactly what that means because most beef starts out on grass and then they finish it out on grain and even just finishing it out is really what can change the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio and that's what makes it either an inflammatory or non-inflammatory. And so it's just super interesting. So if you're interested in that, I can link it down below. So now we are at Winco and we need to get a bunch of herbs and fresh citrus. And that's what I'm doing now. We wanted to look for horseradish. I've seen horseradish before at Winco and I couldn't find it today. And then here are some chives. The chives at my house are growing, except I already harvested them and used all of them for a different recipe. And these chives looked really sad and pitiful. So we decided to go with green onions instead of chives because the chives were $2 for a little package that looked a little bit wilty and So we decided to go ahead and substitute green onions. And this is me looking for horseradish. They have all these really interesting things. They have yucca, taro, and this huge um, daikon radish. I've never cooked with either of those three things or this. This was super interesting. This was, um, I can't even remember what it was called, but those are things that I think I want to Google and do some research on and maybe try experimenting with them. And I couldn't find horseradish, but they have a ton of canning jars which is super exciting because canning season is coming up. And now we are getting some of the ingredients we need for the cake. We need some regular flour. My mom said she had a bunch of cake flour at the house, but we needed just all-purpose flour. And then she needed lemon extract. And I've never purchased lemon extract before, so we were looking at what the ingredients on the lemon extract bottle are. We looked for fresh horseradish and we couldn't find it. So we are just going to get jarred. And, but we're gonna make a horseradish sauce out of the jarred horseradish. And it's gonna be so good. It'll be good with either the lamb or the prime rib. This is the best thing we could find. It has about 10 ingredients in it. <laughs> so my goal is going to be to try to grow horseradish. It was always my plan, but I never got around to planting it at the last house. And so now after seeing this, we're gonna get it. But It's definitely a good boost to go ahead and get me, oh my goodness, it's busy, to encourage me to get horseradish planted. It's supposed to be pretty easy to grow. I think it turns into like a weed, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think we got lots of so. Yeah, we'll just, we can just be right here. Very busy, we're, it's Friday, so (laughs) it's very, very busy today. Gotta make sure we got it all. 
So I don't want to be running down the Safeway because we Forgot missed something. something. Looks like everything's crossed off the list. It does. Bags and toys. I'm going to go look and see if there are bags here. Okay. My mom is going to see if she can find some Easter bags and toys here. And then we don't have to run to Hobby Lobby. But if she doesn't, we'll just run to Hobby Lobby and then we'll get some lunch on the way home before we go back to the house and we do a bunch of food prep. We're gonna try to do as much of the food prep today as we can. So we're gonna bake the cakes, make the potatoes. So tomorrow all we have to do is rewarm the potatoes. We're gonna make the two sauces, the chimichurri and the horseradish sauce. And then I think that's all we're gonna do. My sister's making the hot cross buns. So we don't have to worry about making any hot cross buns, but I'll show you what those look like. And I think that's everything. My mom does find a few little things here at Winco for the kids and their Easter baskets, but we do end up going to Hobby Lobby because we want to get some bags. What, what her idea is, is to have bags that she'll have some goodies Easter things in, and then when she hides the eggs, her and my dad hide the eggs, then they'll be able to use those bags for hunting for the eggs. So one thing my mom and dad like to do for Easter is they like to put $1 bills in <laughs> the eggs. And some of my nieces and nephews are getting a little bit older. And so that's more exciting to them than just candy. And I think that's super fun. So all of the kids to get an equal amount of eggs. So she hides the eggs. The easiest, the littlest kids get to go first and they find the easiest eggs and each kid gets 10 eggs and then the older kids go. So it's just kind of fun. So we're at Hobby Lobby. I think I've only been in the Hobby Lobby once because we just got this one, what, a year ago? Yeah. Yeah, we didn't have any Hobby Lobbies in our area until recently. So we are going to see what goodies we can find for the kiddos. I think there's... I like it. It's got a lot of fun stuff. I think there's seven, seven kids we're shopping for. Yes. Oh, yes. Cute already. I can already tell this store is going to be super fun. And next time I do a big dinner party at my house, I might have to come here and look for some table decor because that's something that every time I keep having these dinner parties, I'm having more and more fun decorating the tables. <laughs> and so anyway, I just thought that there was a lot of really fun and cute stuff just right off the bat in Hobby Lobby. I see why people like this store. These can function as Easter baskets to collect eggs, but before that, they will have little Easter gifts in them. So like I said, there are seven kids that we're shopping for, and the age ranges are from 12 to three and a half months. <laughs> so we've got quite the age range. These little toys, we end up getting a bigger version of those for the bigger kids. My sister-in-law bought those toys for my one-year-old nephew and we just had his one-year-old birthday party a couple weeks ago and it was surprising how much fun every person had the adults and the kids with those toys so i thought that we should get some of those for my nieces and nephews so we're trying to look for toys for you know different age kids in here and my mom said that these off-brand legos are horrible and that they don't work so we definitely we left those there and we didn't get those but we were trying to find not just plasticky toys but trying to find like crafts and stuff like that but we also get distracted and we start looking at some oh here's a puzzle that we thought might be fun but I think it's too complicated for one of the kids we were looking for but here we get distracted and we start looking at the more adult stuff I guess the stuff that my mom and I <laughs> enjoy looking at more than just toys so here's some really beautiful cutting boards and aprons. Like I said, I had never been in here before really only one time I think and it was a year and a half ago and I don't remember why I went in there but each one of these aisles is themed. I'm sure you all know. I'm sure you guys have all been in Hobby Lobby many times <laughs> but one thing that I was having fun looking at was aprons. I really like aprons and so my mom was telling me that the aprons are kind of themed. They're throughout the whole store and they have different themed ones. I found one in here I really liked. I didn't buy it, but I really liked this striped one and it had leather straps. So it was super good quality and I thought it was really pretty, but I didn't end up buying anything. So now we're back looking at more crafty stuff for the kids. And so we're trying to find not just toys, but something that they could actually kind of do. So we were looking at those um, 
what are those called? I can't remember. I remember enjoying them as a kid, stained glass things. My nephew, he, we thought he would enjoy doing a paint by number. So we were looking at the different paint by numbers. I really liked doing these when I was about his age and he had had one. My mom bought him one a while back and he enjoyed it. So we were looking at all the different paint by numbers. My grandpa, he was an avid paint by number and he would do these massive, really complicated ones. And so they're just kind of something that my family has always enjoyed doing. And so we're just enjoying looking at the different things for the different kids. And so now we are checking out and we are going to go ahead to lunch and meet up with my dad. I got distracted. That's cute. It was cute. Oh. When are you getting bees? Maybe this spring, but I think probably next spring. Next spring? Yeah. Do I think we have enough have going on. You get them in the spring? Yeah, you want to get them in the spring. Uh, that's when the hives split, and that's when you can get them, when the okay. hives split. But I think we probably are going to finish focusing on the garden, and then maybe tackle bees. Oh, my car's open. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you wanted me to drive. No, no. <laughs> All right, we are gonna go meet my dad for lunch. I like to treat my mom and dad to lunch because when we do these cooking days together, I just appreciate her letting me hang out and take you all along. And my mom really enjoys it too. So I just think it's fun if I can also treat her to lunch as a thank you for letting us hang out with her today. So this is a noodle place that's in my parents' town. It's called Noodle Man. If you're interested, these are homemade noodles. They make all the noodles there. And this place is so delicious and we just really, really enjoy it. I like spicy food, so I end up putting a little bit of hot pepper oil on it. And we have a really great lunch together. I tried to carry as many of these bags in as possible and I've left a trail of stuff I dropped on the way in here. I was feeling a little bit run down until we ate. Now I feel like I have a second wind so that we can get to cooking. Let me get all this stuff in here. I'll show you what we got. We got a lot of good stuff. We made it. We got all this stuff inside. Yeah, lots. It's awesome. Okay, let me sort this out here. So I think what we're gonna cook today to prep, we're gonna make the cakes and the two sauces. Potatoes. Potatoes, so that all we have to do is reheat the potatoes. I think if we were to prep the potatoes and not bake them, the potatoes might turn brown, don't you think? Yes, they will. In fact, the instructions said not to leave it- Unbaked? Unbaked. Oh, okay. Well, because the potatoes will turn brown. They won't look so nice. So we had a good plan. I think that's everything. That bag on the counter is My dad also knew that I was getting a little tired, so he picked me up. Caramel macchiato. Nice. That's a special treat for sure. We've got quite a bit more we got to do today, but here is our haul. Not too big. Mostly just some fresh things for the cake and some dairy items for the potatoes. We have shallots. This is for the peas. We're gonna do a new recipe that is gonna be shallots and peas. And Parmesan. Oh, oh! so we have a lot of Parmesan yes, we're doing today yeah. because we've got the, the- Oh, wait, I'm sorry. The Parmesan is for the asparagus. Yes. The peas is, is there bacon in the peas? No. No, okay, just shallots and peas. If you've never had a shallot before, it's like a little red onion, except it's sweet. It's got a really good yummy sweetness to it. I would love to grow these one year. I don't plan to grow them this year, but maybe one year in the garden we'll grow those. We have lemons for, I think, the cake and the asparagus. We're gonna do our scallop potatoes with Yukon Golds, anchovies for the lamb, horseradish for the horseradish sauce, lemon extract for the cake, cream cheese for the cream cheese frosting. The cake that we are making is a, the recipe we, my mom found is a blueberry lemon cake, but my sister-in-law asked for a berry cake, right? She did. So we figured might as well just adapt that recipe and add some raspberries and blackberries to it and make it a berry cake. 
Right, and we will dust the berries with the flour mixture yeah. so that they don't all sink to the bottom. My mom has a good trick for that, so I'm excited to share that with you. And then we will decorate the cake with berries. the berries. Peas, these need to get into the freezer right away for our pea recipe. Okay, yep, right now. perfect. And then we've got a lamb. Now, we've tried to find the smallest lamb roast we could. This is 5.6 pounds. And this is something we don't normally have, so it's definitely a treat to have for this holiday meal. And then we needed half and half for coffee with dessert, heavy cream for the potatoes. Now the potatoes needed quite a bit of cheese. So we need Gruyere cheese, a medium cheese. The reason we went with, oh, I guess she did buy sharp. But this is not as sharp as the other one we normally buy, which is a three year age. This is a nine month year age. The longer a cheese ages, like a Parmesan, this is three years, I think, or 24 months. I'd have to look. Let's see. 36 months, so this is three years aged. The longer a cheese ages, the less moisture in it because it's drying out and the less melty. So we did try to get one that had a little bit, that was a little bit younger cheese so that we could have some meltiness because the Gruyere too, does it say on here how long? This is eight months aged. So that will have a little bit of meltiness, but the this cheddar is probably going to have it. Well, it's nine months age, so you will see. We'll see. We'll see how it turns out. We need some sour cream for the horseradish, so we're going to make a horseradish sauce using our canned horseradish that we got, and this and some mayonnaise and a couple other ingredients. We are making a chimichurri. Now, chimichurri is one of our family's favorite sauces, and it is so easy. We're going to use some of the lemons, some garlic green onions, parsley, cilantro, and oregano. The horseradish sauce called for chives, but the chives looked not super great, and they were $2 for really wilty, sad-looking chives. So for 98 cents, we're gonna use green onions instead because the green onions looked really nice and fresh and really yummy. They smell really good now that I just picked them up, and so we thought that that was a better option than getting chives that were a little wilty and sad looking and then we needed some all-purpose flour for the cake the cake recipe uses half all-purpose and half cake flour so that's why we picked this up and then we have our roast in here which my dad has before he came to lunch he emptied this water and refilled it with cold water so this water is still nice and cold so obviously we have our roast here and we probably will empty it put some more cold water and let this sit for just a little bit longer and then pop that in the fridge we will have to because we will have to use the sink. Oh, that's true. That's true because we are about to get cooking. I am going to end this here. We are going to just pick it right back up though. So if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing so you can see us make all this food. My mom and I do this. Well, it's been since Thanksgiving since we've done this. Yeah. Or, did we do Christmas? Mm -mm. Oh, just Thanksgiving. No, nope, because there was well, the baby. one of my favorite things yeah. to do and we try to do it several yeah, times norm a year. Yeah, normally. Like every other month at least. Yes. There was just a lot that was going on in December. Yeah, there was. So we'll, we will pick this up. So please consider subscribing. If you enjoyed this video, I can also pop a couple of my other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And we can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend. Bye-bye.